Hello everyone, thank you for joining this month's Connect with Control M. My name is Mario Rodriguez and I'm a technical support analyst for the Control M team at BMC. Today we'll be discussing Control M workload archiving. Joining us today are panelists Hugo Arguello and Richard Talbert. During this presentation, we recommend going to full screen mode by pressing the full screen button. Please note that this presentation is available via the files pod on the bottom of your screen. For any questions you may have during the presentation, please feel free to post them in the Q&A pod. We'll be addressing your questions at the end of the session. So let's take a look at the agenda. We'll have an overview of Control and Workload Archiving, some demonstrations of features and troubleshooting, a summary of what was discussed today, some resources including additional knowledge articles, and we'll finish with a question and answer session. So let's start with our overview. We're gonna be looking at the Control and Workload Archiving architecture, and what's new for archiving 9.0.20 and above. So what is Control and work Workload Archiving and what is its architecture? It's an add-on that enables you to automatically archive job log and output data from mainframe and distributed Control and server systems. So these archives are stored in a secure and central uh, database that is separate from the production environment. Control and Workload Archiving is installed with a local or external Postgres um, database or an external Oracle database. And it's on a distributed Control M Enterprise Manager server. And BMC recommends that you install this on a dedicated server. And when Control M server submits a job to run on an agent, the archiving server achieves the, or archives the job log and output into a separate database for a defined period based on the configuration in the workload archiving policies. So this archive assists with audit and compliance requirements or troubleshooting the environment using the uh, historical data. Uh, users' access uh, to the archive data is managed through Control M Enterprise Manager authorizations. So here's what is new in version 9.0.20 workload archiving in Enterprise Manager. Automation API now supports the archive service call. These uh, services allow users to search through job data archived in the workload archiving server, as well as obtain job outputs and job logs for individual jobs using the Automation API. Um, administrators can set up the rules for the job archiving, view statistics regarding archived jobs, and delete accumulated data from the workload archiving server as well. Next, we'll get into our demos. These will include a quick look at the Automation API archive search, uh, communication issues between archive and server and enterprise manager, uh, ways to verify why an archive job does not show job output, some commands that can be commonly used to check various aspects of the archive and server, and how to find and review the archive and server logs. For our first demo, here are the automation API commands that will be demonstrated. There's a git for archive search, archive job log, and archive job output service call. Let's see what an actual call will look like with these parameters in a live environment. All right, so here's our automation API environment and we have a CTM CLI installed and we can show our current environment is configured and we can do a session login. And now that we have that, we can go ahead and run our archive search job and to show the uh, parameters here, this is for the search. Um, you have your uh, field one and the uh, search term. Uh, here we have job name and hours calculate as a job we want to search for. Uh, here we have the host that it was ran on, and this would be for the host of CTM agent. And if we want to search by a specific day, uh, we can use the order date from. Uh, and in this case, I want to search only for this job that ran on July 16th and the order date too will also be uh, July 16th. So we'll just see the jobs from that specific date. And here we can see we get a return of the job ID, number of runs. These two will be used for the next uh, service calls as well as all these other uh, output uh, for <coughs> different fields that can be used by your development team. So using the job ID and the number of runs, uh, we can then enter uh, that into the CTM archive uh, for job log. And you just put it in this format of the 
uh, host control home server plus the order ID and the number of runs is one. And here we can see the job log from the archiving server. Uh, using that same setup, we can do that for the uh, job output. And in this case, it was a simple echo that this job ran. You can see here that it echoed hours calculate and that completed. And that sums up the automation API archive service calls. Next would be the communication demo for the new port used by Thrift. In this demonstration, you'll see the new port required for the workload archive in uh, 9.2.0. Uh, connection. When using a firewall, this port used by Thrift may be blocked, and we'll take a look at how to determine the port in order to allow it in the firewall between Enterprise Manager and the uh, workload archiving server. So here, from our workload archiving server, we want to run this uh, command of arc test configuration. Um, this one has a bit of detail that we'll go into um, further on a next demonstration. And in the output of this uh, utility, it will show us what is uh, registered with the enterprise manager. And here we have a successful connection from this host. And this is a port that we are looking for. So we can see that it's uh, currently reachable and it's registered with the uh, name and service on the enterprise manager. So one quick way to see that it's running. is to search for that uh, port on the local archive and server machine, we'll see that it's uh, listening. And if we run the same command from the enterprise manager server, we can see that it has the uh, connections available to the enterprise manager. So this is a port that must be open uh, between the two, and there will be a, a knowledge article attached to this uh, webinar that can be reviewed on how to configure the uh, this port to be a specific port or a range of ports and um, the steps on how to make sure that it's open and that the uh, enterprise manager and workload archive and server are uh, communicating correctly. In this demo, I'll show some examples of archive job that does not have output and possible reasons uh, why this may occur. So if we go into our uh, history domain and do an archive search, and let's say we wanted to find all job runs for the job of hours calculates. And we're looking back on a run that was done on the 14th. We see that there were two. And we check this one, and the output does not, is not found. Um, first thing you want to do is make sure that the archiving policy is configured to collect um, at least job output. So let's go to our configuration manager here. Go to our workload archive and server and the configuration. And we'll see our archive and policy. Uh, looks like it is active. It's collecting for one year and it's of archive and all jobs that executed on the distributed system for one year. So in these uh, role details, uh, we can see that it's um, archiving both log and output, so we're expecting output to be found in that job. Uh, we also see that it's for all control room servers, so it should have included the server that this job ran uh, from that particular agent. So if that looks okay, we'll go ahead and go back. And um, we want to check our control room agent now. So if we go to our control room agent and uh, the directory to find the job output is in the uh, sysout directory. So it would be the agent home, CTM, and then sysout. If we list our files here, we can see that they're only from the uh, July 22nd and July 23rd. So that job ran on July 14th, and we're not going to be able to find the uh, job there. Um, so these files are by order ID and or um, run number. So if we uh, look at that from our job information here, and one thing to note is that the archiving logs also go only by the order ID and uh, run ID. Um, so it's best to use this and not try to search for any uh, job names in those logs. So here we can see that there's no uh, order IDs that end with uh, just three. Um, and we're far past the dates where uh, this would be actually be on the uh, agent side. 
So from there, we can uh, take a look at the archiving logs. In here, uh, the logs are found under the archiving uh, distributed EM installation under CTM underscore EM, archive and log. If we list the files here, we'll see that there are many types of logs. Which I'll go into some detail in the following demo. Um, but the main ones to uh, look for when it comes to job collections is these archive dot with the timestamps uh, logs. So to search all of the logs, which would be these here, um, we can go and search the order ID and the run number. So going back to our job, we can grab this order ID. It's uh, run number one, and let's do that in the format that it's uh, written to in the logs. So we search for that run number, do a dash and the, sorry, the order ID, a dash and the run number, and search all the archive logs. We'll find where this specific job and run number um, were attempted, attempted to be collected on the archiving server. And this is a log where it was uh, logged in. So let's look at that one directly. And we can search the uh, same order ID and run number. One. And here we can see that this uh, order ID and run number started collecting. Uh, it looks like it was going to be collected according to the archiving uh, policy rules, but here it shows that it was, uh, yep, the same error it does not exist for the job. Um, so it appears that it wasn't an issue with the archiving server as well, uh, since it did uh, try to collect the job output, but um, it did not find any. And this one was simply missing output because if we go to our log here, we can see that the uh, job was submitted to the agent, but um, it had an invalid job owner. So if in did not okay, and there's no output because the job did not actually uh, execute and provide an output. In the next demonstration, I'll be showing some common troubleshooting commands for workload archiving. These will include arc server state, arc dbu status and arc test configuration so let's go to our workload archiving server here and we can run arc server state this simply gives us a acknowledgement of whether the workload archiving server is up or down uh, the next we can check on the database using arc dbu status this arc is a uh, wrapper for the user profile um, necessary to run the uh, DBU status and invoke the correct um, environment variables. And you will need the database owner uh, password in order to complete this. Uh, this gives us the information about the database, such as the type, whether it's up or down, uh, if it's remote, and all the other version information and ports. Last will be the ARC test configuration that we ran previously. And in this, um, we'll go into a little bit more detail on the following lines. <clears throat> the first being whether the um, control room workload archiving server is registered and what the port number um, was registered for that thrift port mentioned before. Um, we also have the information about whether the archiving server is reachable and if it's connected and if it registered with the name and service on the enterprise manager. Um, here we have warning that the uh, workload archiving database stops sending jobs for collection. Um, this is only uh, shown whenever there are no jobs uh, being collected in, in this environment. Um, there weren't any job runs at the moment, which is why it shows that warning. But whenever there are jobs being collected, this will uh, not be appearing. You also get your disk usage uh, to show how many, how much percentage is used on the available disk for your uh, job logs and output. 
and whether or not the connection to the workload archive and server is confirmed or not. So that concludes our demonstrations. And in summary, we looked at the workload archiving architecture. Uh, we discussed the new automation API archive services. We had some demonstrations, including the automation API archive services, as well as communication issues, uh, job output not appearing, and how to uh, review those in the agents and archive and server logs, and some commonly used commands. Here are some of the additional resources and knowledge articles that are commonly used with workload archiving. First is how to disable log collection for cyclic jobs in workload archiving. Uh, sometimes cyclic jobs uh, that are run at high intervals can overwhelm the archiving server uh, due to the volume of jobs attempted to be collected. And uh, this knowledge article shows how to lower the interval or disable that um, altogether and only capture the final run. The next is um, whenever users request like hold or free are delayed uh, in the uh, client and workload archiving server is enabled. Um, this knowledge article will show some uh, modifications to the uh, gateway uh, that the uh, inter on the enterprise manager machine to uh, improve performance. Uh, next is the documentation on the automation API workload archive and search functions or calls. And lastly is when doing an archive search in workload archive in 9.0.20, there's a message of uh, failed to connect to the workload archive and server, even though that the uh, job log and the job output um, was collected. And this was from the uh, previous demo that showed the thrift port and making sure that's enabled uh, because that would, uh, is the cause of that last issue. Thank you for attending this presentation. We hope the information provided useful in helping you to further understand workload archiving. Uh, we encourage you to provide your feedback on the webinar and the feedback tab. And please let us know what you thought about the presentation, any topics you may want covered in the future, or any comments and suggestions you may have. Also, we'll be sending a survey in the following days. I would appreciate if you took a few minutes of your time to fill it out and provide your responses and send them in. You may follow us on social media platforms via Facebook and Twitter. And past webinars uh, may be viewed on the BMC Software Control M channel on YouTube. Today's webinar will be posted in a couple of days on the YouTube channel as well. We will now proceed with the question and answer session.